This is the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace are yours this morning from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of my favorite television programs, it's now off the air, is a show called The West Wing. Any other fans? A few? Okay. Okay. This program follows the trials and tribulations of President Josiah Bartlett and his staff. President Bartlett's chief of staff is a man named Leo McGarry, a brilliant and caring man who is also a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Leo has been through some things. At one point in the show, another staff member whose name is Josh is struggling deeply in his life. He's having a hard time finding any hope. So Leo tells him this story. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in a hole. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by, and the guy shouts up, Hey, you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Then a priest comes along, and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. (laughs) Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before, and I know the way out. The friend knows the way out of the hole. And in saying this to the man who's stuck in the hole, he offers his friend a word of hope. And in telling Josh this story, Leo is giving him some hope too. Last week in his sermon, Pastor Dave talked some about the book of Revelation as a book written for Christians who were oppressed in the first century Roman Empire. As such, the book of Revelation, when it was written, was written to offer a word of hope to Christians living under an oppressive regime. In the first century Roman Empire, the expectation was that all would worship the emperor, that all would call him God. 
to worship Jesus and to call Jesus God was an act of civil disobedience. And when people were caught in their Christian worship, they would be persecuted and jailed and even executed. The expectation was absolute allegiance and devotion to the emperor God. In our modern 21st century American Christian lives, we wear crosses and other Christian symbolism on our jewelry, for example. We wear it quite openly. But in the first century, Christians used the fish symbol, also called an ichthys, as a secret symbol to identify each other. If one person met someone else along the road and wanted to find out if they too were a Christian, they would casually draw half the fish in the dirt. If the other person completed the fish, then they both knew who the other person was. This person is another follower of Christ. To be a Christian in that era was to live as an oppressed person. And it was into this bleak situation that John of Patmos wrote his book of Revelation. This is a book that is full of languages and images that may be mysterious to us in our modern age. But for those first century Christians, John was offering them a word of hope and a vision of hope. As part of this vision, John tells them about a multitude that no one can even count, a multitude made up of a diversity of people from all around the globe, and to help them with their imagination, he describes the multitude for them. He says, they are standing before a throne and the lamb is on the throne and the multitude is robed in white and they are holding palm branches in their hands. Maybe you can see it too. The multitude is worshiping God, crying out and singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. And John is giving this vision to a group of oppressed Christians who have to worship in secret for fear of their lives. He's offering them a vision of what their worship will someday be, a day on which there will be no fear of being overheard and jailed and executed. And then John continues with his vision, and we learn that this multitude has been through an ordeal of some kind, a great ordeal, but they have endured by the grace of God. They have endured by the grace of God. And so they worship God both day and night. Their lives are centered around worshiping their great shepherd, Jesus. And even though they've been through some things, even though they've been through some ordeals, there is one final word of hope from John here for them. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And so, my friends, what is oppressing you 
on this day. You are probably oppressed in a very different way from first century Christians. Maybe you are oppressed by worry or anxiety. Maybe you are oppressed by grief or heartbreak, by illness or injury, by people or systems that are seeking to keep you down. Maybe you are oppressed by someone else's sinfulness. Maybe by your own sinfulness. Or maybe it's something much less defined, something you haven't even figured out quite yet. My friends in Christ, if you are downtrodden, if you are oppressed, and hear this vision of hope. Jesus crucified has risen. Jesus, our good shepherd, has you firmly in his loving hands, and like any good shepherd, Jesus knows you as his own. And nothing can snatch you away from the arms of our Good Shepherd. As Paul writes in Roman chapter, Romans chapter 8, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this promise of God is our hope. Amen.